Farming is in my blood. Like many of you, I have deep connections in agriculture. In our house, we take these deep connections very seriously. And for us, that means being actively involved in promoting agriculture in order to help people understand what happens on farms. And their biggest question, what are GMOs? GMOs are in the news all of the time, but have come to realize that many people don't know what they are. According to Wikipedia, a GMO is, quote, any organism whose genetic material has been altered using genetic engineering. But what does this mean to a regular person who just wants to eat safe food? Unfortunately, a lack of knowledge and too much negative press means that the term genetically modified organism is used to make people fearful of the same technology they use in other areas of their lives. For example, vaccines are genetically engineered and save millions of lives every day. Without them, many of us wouldn't be around at all. This makes explaining GMOs to someone who's not a farmer quite complicated. Negative publicity online and in social media has raised consumer concerns about farming technology to an all-time high. This means that people fear GMOs, but the world's population is growing, and recent statistics from the United Nations show that 795 million people don't have enough to eat. That's more than 1 in 10 people worldwide. And that's a problem modern science can solve. Unfortunately, activists like Canada's very own David Suzuki have said, quote, any politician or scientist who tells you these products are safe is either very stupid or lying, unquote. What a way to make Canadians scared of the very food systems that make us one of the most successful countries in the world. That's why, if I was ever able to talk to Dr. Suzuki directly, I would say that they are neither stupid nor lying. As a 16-year-old with real-life experience on my family farm, I know to choose science-based facts over emotional bias. By creating fear instead of understanding, people like Dr. Suzuki are ignoring the real science behind GMOs. If they have their way, when the world hits 9 billion people by 2050, it will be a much hungrier place. Fortunately, respected thinkers like the astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson from the United States and Elaine Aspect from France have stated that sound science is the basis for making decisions about GMOs. They say GMOs give all farmers the ability to grow crops that have herbicide tolerance, disease and pest resistance, and in some cases can stand up to extreme weather and soil conditions. They also give farmers from third world countries a chance to produce a better crop and provide healthy alternatives such as golden rice. Golden rice was developed to help people in third world countries who are not getting enough vitamin A in their diets. This can cause night blindness in children when left untreated. And the numbers are staggering. According to the Agricultural Biotechnology Support Projects, each year over half a million kids get night blindness and up to two million people die every year from this condition. A really easy fix to this problem would be for farmers to grow golden rice, but they aren't allowed to because of fear and propaganda. By creating a mistrust of GMOs and modern technology, activists have set the course for increasing organic production. I say that organic production is a marketing technique created to get people to spend more money on food. And contrary to popular opinion, organic farming isn't better. It just comes with a different set of problems such as using more resources for lower yields. In comparison, modern farming methods use fewer resources while building yields and productivity. For example, U.S. oranges are under attack from a disease called citrus greening that could wipe out the industry. That would be devastating for farmers and businesses alike, and for people who just love to eat oranges. Fortunately, scientists are developing a GMO orange to combat this disease. Like all of you, I like to eat. And as a farm kid, I trust our food systems because I work in them every day and because I'm a fifth generation farmer who loves the production of food. Most people who talk badly about modern agriculture don't know that we only use what's necessary to grow healthy food. They don't know what it's like to watch a really good farmer like my dad sit with his agronomist, pouring over soil tests to make sure that the nutrients and the organisms in the soil 
are balanced. They don't see that we use GMOs because it creates more food using fewer resources while protecting people and the environment. They don't understand that farmers eat the same food that they produce and that's why we take food production so seriously. I'm also lucky enough to go to a good school that teaches the sound principles of science. So when someone like David Suzuki says, quote, GMOs are all about corporate greed and not only punishing the farmer, but also the consumer, unquote. I can say he's got it wrong. He's using fear of science to create a fear of food. And that puts the entire world at risk. Technology benefits all of us every day. The same people who want better phones, more environmentally friendly cars, are some of the biggest critics of the science of food production. These people don't want to make food production easier. They don't want to help farmers whose crops are being demolished by disease or drought. Instead, they want to stop farmers from using GMOs because they don't understand science. Those are just some of the facts and opinions I would share with a consumer. I'd engage them in a thoughtful conversation about where their food comes from and how it is produced. I think it's important for them to understand that farmers are better able today to feed the world than ever before. This is in large part thanks to the, the development of genetically modified crops. This is the future of farming and the future is bright.